then we can just say, you are a dog now. And welcome back to Mcoding, I'm James Murphy. Today we're talking about the difference between the type of an object and the Dunder class attribute of that object, and also how to change the class of an object at runtime after it's been created. It's that time again to talk about the best sponsor, myself. That's right, Mcoding is not just my YouTube channel, it's also my software consulting company. We do software consulting, contracting, training, and interview prep, so if you need any of those things, please do reach out to me. You can find out more by visiting mcoding.io. So let's dive in. If you have any exposure to Python, you're probably already familiar with type. Pass in any object to the built-in type and it tells you what type it is. Here we're implementing the Dunder copy for the animal class by getting the type of the object and then creating a new object of that type, passing in the same name. When we define equality for our object, it's also common to not want to compare against things that aren't of the same type. In this case, we just check if type of self is the same as type of other. And when we're defining a wrapper for our class, it's common to have the name of the type in the string representation. The reason that we even use the type at all instead of just hard coding the name of the class, animal, is because of inheritance. Let's say we had a dog class that inherits from animal. Of course, printing out an animal, we get the expected result. But if we create a dog instead, then it still prints out animal instead of dog. But if we use type of self, then it'll do the right thing in both cases. For animal, it'll print out animal, and for dog, it'll print out dog. So that's your pretty typical use case. As expected, type of self gives you the type of self. What else is there to say about it? Well, if you read enough code, you might see other people, instead of using type of self, instead they're saying self.dunder class. Everywhere that you might be expecting to see type of self, instead you see this other thing. So is one of them right and one of them wrong? Like, what's the difference? Hmm, well, how about we look at the CPython source code and just get a feel for how many times each is used. Okay, so there are a decent number of occurrences of type of self. And there are also a decent number of occurrences of self.class. The fact that they're both pretty widely used is a bit strange, but okay. Maybe I need a flame war to see which one's better. Go ahead and comment hashtag type or hashtag class to let me know which one you like better. I mean, obviously, if you've got class, you should go with... Anyway, back to the differences between them, rest assured that 99.9% .9 of the time, they do exactly the same thing, and you shouldn't worry about it. The number one reason that people choose one over the other is just pure stylistic preference or just copying code that already exists. People that prefer Dunder class tend to think that using multiple pairs of parens like this can be slightly less readable. And people that prefer type tend to compare it to using other built-ins like length, where you wouldn't typically call a Dunder length, you would just use the built-in length. Realistically, in most cases, just pick one and stick with it. It just doesn't matter. So for the 0.1% of time where it might actually make a difference, Here's the actual differences. The primary difference between using type and using Dunder class is that a class can lie about its Dunder class. The first way a class can lie is just by assigning the Dunder class attribute. If you were to use Dunder class, you would see the lie, some class. But the built-in type can't be fooled, it will always give you the real type of the object. The class could also lie like this, making Dunder class a property. Or it could even lie by overriding the Dunder get attribute and specifically checking for Dunder class. I mean, if you do this, you must have incredible job security. Now, as obviously wrong and bad as doing something like this seems, maybe if someone's doing this, they have a good reason. There's probably some testing mock library somewhere that depends on this behavior. So that's an actual functionality reason to use under class over type. One big thing to watch out for, though, is not an object lying about its class, but an object changing its class at runtime. Getting back to the animal and dog example, we can see that we can actually assign to the Dunder class attribute. So we can create an animal. If we use type or Dunder class, we see animal. Then we can just say, you are a dog now. At which point, both type and Dunder class now tell you dog. That's right, it's not just lying to you and telling you that its Dunder class is dog, but its type is actually animal. It is actually a dog now. This can obviously go wrong in so many ways. For starters, the object was created and initialized as an animal. If animal defined an init function, that would have been called here. But if dog had defined an init function, in this case it didn't, but if it did, it was never called. So the dog part of this animal may not have been initialized. You could also do it the other way. Start with the dog and then tell it 
you're just an animal now. Just like before, whether you use type or the Dunder class attribute, they both agree it starts out as a dog and then it becomes an animal. If you try calling a method that only dog has that animal doesn't, you won't find it. This is also, in general, not a safe operation, although it kind of looks like upcasting, which would be safe. In this case, it suffers from kind of the reverse problem, as in the previous one. Here, this is initialized as a dog, and it may contain dog-specific state. But the animal class doesn't know about any of that state, and it might end up accidentally misusing it because it doesn't know that it's there. But you can do even weirder because the new type that you're turning it into doesn't have to be related at all to the old one. It doesn't have to be a superclass, it doesn't have to be a subclass, it doesn't have to be anywhere in the MRO. So before, Bork is an animal, and then he's a car. And this is made possible because in order to convert from one class to another, there's pretty much only one restriction. And that is that the classes need to have a compatible layout. Well, how's it even possible that an animal and a car have the same layout? Didn't the animal have a name attribute, but the car doesn't? Most Python objects are just a wrapper around their instance dictionary, which you can see a proxy of by accessing the dunder dict attribute. This is why it's possible to set and delete arbitrary attributes at runtime. This means you shouldn't have any trouble converting between any two normal classes. It is possible to have classes that don't have compatible layouts though, for instance if you use slots in one but not in the other. If you're trying to mutate the class of an object, the to and from need to have the exact same slots. So if one has slots and the other doesn't, or if they have different slots, then they won't be compatible. You'll also have trouble converting to or from most built-ins or anything that inherits from them as those typically have their own custom layouts. So how about an example where you might actually want to do this that's not totally crazy? I mean, it's still mostly crazy, but not totally crazy. This one's actually straight out of the docs, so you know it can't be too crazy. When you define a module in Python, you have basically no control over the type of the module object that's created. You just write your pi file, and then when you import it, somehow magically a module is there. By default, modules have the built-in module type. But modules are objects just like everything else in Python, so you might have wanted to customize the behavior of your module. You can actually do that by defining your own module type and then setting the Dunder class attribute of the current module to be that module type. In this case, we're just modifying set adder, so if someone sets a value on our module, like a global variable, then it'll print out a message but in theory, you could do whatever logging or other behavior that you want. The other use case I have is a way of deserializing in-memory representations of objects. Suppose I've got some data stored in a class, and that class has some non-trivial internal state. Then suppose that I want to restore or deserialize an object that had a given state. Say x was 1 and the internal state was 4. Depending on the structure and implementation of this class, it may be difficult to construct an instance that has this given state. You may not know the sequence of events that led it to be in this state, or you may not want to repeat that sequence even if you know it. Instead, you might like to just have that object sort of pop into existence with the given state. So what we'll do is create a blank class that has a compatible layout. Then we can just reach into the object and update its instance dictionary to match the exact state that we're looking for. Finally, modify the Dunder class to be our desired class. At this point, once again, type and Dunder class will agree that the class is some data. So what might have been cons, or points to watch out for before, can now be used to our benefit. Creating an object this way doesn't go through any of the normal mechanisms. It doesn't get initialized with its dunder init, it wasn't created using the dunder new, and it didn't have its meta classes dunder call called either. Now normally, you would want all those things to happen, but in this case, where you just want the object to pop into existence at a known given state, maybe you don't want those things to happen. If you're familiar with the built-in pickle, this is similar but even more extreme than what pickle does. Pickle will create the object using the dunder new of the class, and then it'll update the dictionary, or if you have a set state defined, it'll use that instead. But a class's get state and set state may not be something that you control, especially if you didn't write the class. Additionally, that representation may not be just a copy of the instance dictionary. It could be compressed, or just different variables stored, or some things just recomputed once it's unpickled. I mean, don't get me wrong, if you can use pickle, then you should definitely use pickle over doing this. But if you need to, this is one use case. Once again, I'm James Murphy, thank you for watching, if you enjoy the content, please do subscribe, and if you especially enjoy my content, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. As always, thank you to my patrons and donors for supporting me, I really appreciate it. Flap that like button an odd number of times, and I'll see you in the next one.